Welcome to day two of Tasting with Stacy, Blind Tasting with Stacy, even better. So uh, obviously we're stuck at home and looking at the second wine uh, today, but first let's wrap up what we tasted the first time. So the first wine, um, this is not gonna happen all the time, but nailed it, hey. Um, so I'm gonna brag about it a little, or be excited about it, not brag about it, but be excited. And what did I learn? So, um, so the first wine we talked about, if you, want to go back and look at the first video and refresh your memory. Um, so golden, a uh, little bit of sediment, um, malolactic, evidence of malolactic, um, that kind of cheesy cream curd, lees action, um, ripe or um, just overripe, bruised orchard fruit, not super, super aromatic, and then the structure calls and all that fun stuff. So um, it was a 2015, it was Domaine Jouard, uh, Chassonio Montrachet, so Premier Cru, Le Chaume, um, this vineyard, uh, Claude de Lachaf, this is um, a five generation family, um, Premier Cru, Burgundy, all the things. So that was pretty awesome. Um, and not all the wines get to be that good either. So um, thank you to my husband for picking that one. And thank you for him picking and pouring such a healthy helping of today's red wine. Um, so that's what we're going to do today is look at the red wine. So um, this is a red wine. It is um, way less intensely colored than it looks to you. Um, but uh, it is garnet. It is medium concentration. Uh, and there is a little um, garnet red to almost watery meniscus on this one. Um, medium concentration um, against the rim, against the glass. No sediment, no staining, no gas medium plus tears, medium tears. Um, so yeah, um, let's go to the nose. It's moderately aromatic. Red and black fruits, uh, raspberries, blackberries, cherries, strawberries. Um, there's a little bit of cranberry here, but like a fresh, like a fresh lifted note and not that kind of uh, bitter tartness. Uh, then, a little violet, little rose petal, um, potpourri. So it's like dried flowers, a uh, little cinnamon spice, a little baking spice, and something um, earthy. Uh, dried leaves, again, that the dried part of potpourri, so dried flowers, dried, a little barky. Um, a little bit of earth, but not like dirty, wet, just a little turned, a little fall. Dried is a lot of the character of this. Smells great. Let's taste it. it smells great. It's sound. <laughs> this wine is sound. So it is much more red and much more tart on the palate. It is dry. Um, the cranberries are actually here in full tartness. Um, tart wild strawberries. Uh, there's that little bit of raspberry, a little bit of cherry. Um, it's blackberry, it's red cherry, black cherry, um, a little plumminess, um, a little more violet than roses, but still uh, confirming all the fruits, confirming all the flowers, confirming the potpourri kind of notes of dried bark, leaves, cinnamon. Um, there's a weird mineral to this that's almost like I want to like think back to how soon ago I brushed my teeth because there's a little fluoridey mineral kind of um, mintiness to the palate. I definitely think this has seen some oak, but not super new. It's a lot more dirty on the palate than it was on the on the um, nose. The fruit from the nose is still there but the the earthy um herbal dirtiness of it is coming out a little bit more now um structure wise it's a dry wine it is um, moderate plus acidity moderate plus alcohol moderate body um finish continues on but it's mostly because of the alcohol continuing to burn not of a complexity or a lingering flavor really um it's just it's a little hot um Tannins aren't really anything I want to talk about. They're, I mean, I will. <laughs> they're moderate, moderate, minus even moderate, moderate. Um, but there's, it's, it's soft. It's an afterthought. Um, little dryness to the top of the roof of the mouth. Um, 
So um, all of those things. If you want to pause and think about this and think about all the stuff that I called uh, and make your own initial conclusions, now is the time. Otherwise, initial conclusions. So um, elevated alcohol, the fruit characters, um, really based on the alcohol and what I think the varietal is, I'm going to go New World. Um, the light color, the acidity of the fruit um, makes me think Pinot Noir, but it could be Gamay, another light skin varietal, it could be Grenache. Um, not likely. Um, the color is still, you know, there's a little bit of like browning or garnet to it, but mm, uh, I'm thinking, I'm leaning more Pinot Noir. Um, based on the fruit character, um, that earthiness, the spice, that weird hint of something almost like fluoride or menthol-y, um, that kind of herbaly note. Um, could be Grenache, could be Southern Road. Possibly. Hedging bets, but I think this is New World. Um, I think um, dealing with the varietals of Pinot and Gamay, we're dealing with California, um, and it's youthful. Uh, the, the, there's nothing really venuous or desiccated or, or aged about this wine. One to three years. Um, and uh, my final conclusion, um, this is a Pinot Noir from Russian River Valley, from California, from one to three years, 2017. Um, yeah, let's go with that. All right, tomorrow we'll do it again, and I'll reveal what this wine is, and we'll look at the next one. Uh, if you've got any questions, comments, um, feedback, that's what this is about, um, let's do it. So uh, my Twitter is at Stacey Land. I'm going to post these there and on YouTube. If you want to follow, uh, that would be super fun. And uh, the more people give me feedback, the better I get. So thanks so much, and I hope you all are holding up and drinking great wine.